So the topic that I explored was double colonization, particularly in colonial discourse and the ways in which European men are able to control the narratives of colonized women and therefore create their identities. So I use sort of the intersectionality of post-colonial and feminist studies and I explored this topic in two different works, the first one being Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and the second one being Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. So Bronte's novel was written in the 19th century and it's actually told from the first person perspective of a woman Jane and it tells the story of her life and specifically her romance with the man Rochester and it comes to light that Rochester already has a wife that is from the West Indies that he's kept locked in his attic and he tells Jane that she's insane. Um, and despite Jane actually having the narrative control, it's seen very clearly through looking at it in postcolonial and feminist theory that Rochester is heavily influencing her narrative, particularly in regards to the way that her narrative presents Bertha. Um, so there are sort of linguistic details that show this. At one point in the novel, uh, Rochester refers to birth as it after she sort of unveiled Jane and Jane mirrors this and calls birth it as well and then when Rochester refers to Bertha as she Jane mirrors that language too so even on a very specific linguistic level you see the influence of him and the patriarchy on her language and the fact that he has the ability to influence her because he's a man and she's a woman so her narrative is sort of more susceptible to that in their 19th century society. Um, so it's eventually the only thing that we know of Bertha from Jane Eyre is everything comes from Rochester. So he tells Jane of Bertha's identity but in telling Bertha's story he actually tells his own story um, and sort of just creates Bertha in the framework of his own story and presents her as this villain and this horrible woman who took his life and his youth and because he presents her like that to Jane, Jane accepts it. And so that becomes Bertha's identity entirely and that's how Jane's narrative presents it to her readers. So Bertha is absolutely silenced um, because of Jane's narrative and her not having any narrative autonomy within the novel and Jane is accomplice in this silencing because she doesn't challenge Rochester's influence on her own narrative and Rochester representing you know the European male in general and the patriarchy and colonization and having her own first person narrative Jane has the opportunity to challenge this but she fails to and so Bertha remains completely silenced and it's Rochester through Jane that's creating her identity for her. Um, and then there was so many issues with this colonially that uh, Jean Rhys wrote her novel in response and Wide Sargasso Sea is told from the point of view of Bertha who is renamed Antoinette which is a very important shift in title um, and it tells the story of Bertha slash Antoinette before Jane Eyre ever happened um, and so it's about Bertha's life or Antoinette's life growing up in the West Indies and so there's actually a very slight first person narrative that Antoinette gets within Wine Sargasso Sea and it's only in the very opening and the very end. And then from the moment that um, Rochester enters Antoinette's life and becomes her husband, he takes over the narrative and it's now told from his perspective, his first person. So Reese is very obviously challenging the narrative influence that Rochester has in Jane Eyre by giving him the narrative entirely. So within this, um, you see Rochester sort of creating an identity for his wife as it suits him as the male colonizer. So he sort of creates a sexual identity for her and then he discovers that that isn't working and so he sort of tries to silence her. And a lot of this comes from his own feelings of foreignness because he's in the West Indies and so for the first time he's the other despite being a European man. And in his mind he connects Antoinette's identity to the West Indies and to the island and so that feels threatening to him because not only is she a woman but she's also a colonized woman so that's doubly threatening and so he wants to completely be able to control the discourse on her and control her identity and so he eventually tries to silence her comparing her to a marionette and a doll so even in his language you can see that he wants this sense of control because he's not used to being this other he's used to himself in England being the center and so to combat that feeling of marginalization he takes it out by silencing Antoinette even further and eventually he deems her insane and he tries to control her that way and then the very end of the novel 
returns back to Antoinette's first person narrative and she's now you know regarded as Bertha she's locked in the attic of Thornfield Rochester's home and this is sort of the canonical lining up point between the two novels um, as Jane Eyre ends well part of the ending is uh, Bertha lighting Thornfield on fire and jumping to her death and that's the final chapter that you see in Wide Sargasso Sea but you actually see it from Antoinette's point of view and there's a big separation in her identity that even though she has the narrative there's a scene where she's like who am I what am I doing here there's a distinct separation because Rochester has silenced her so much that she no longer knows how to use a narrative to create an identity for herself but in jumping to her own death and lighting Thornfield on fire, she's actually reclaiming her identity. So the end of the novel allows her to take her narrative back, both literally with having the first person perspective and in a larger sense. And she's burning Thornfield and in turn burning, burning Rochester and this colonial structure that has oppressed her. Um, so she's literally and figuratively setting fire to her oppressors. Um, and so with doing this, Reese is able to create a message of post-colonial narrative defiance that actually spreads beyond her own novel and into Bronte's as well, since this is the connecting point of the plots. Um, and so she's able, Reese draws so much attention to the issues of Rochester's narrative that it's impossible to read Bronte's novel back without seeing those same issues. So by sort of very specifically destabilizing the narrative structure of Jane Eyre, she's able to do that in Wide Sargasso Sea. And it's really important to look at the silencing of colonized women as this isn't something that's exclusively of the past because Wide Sargasso Sea was written a century after Bronte's novel was, so it's very clear that this is still an issue enough that Jean Rhys felt that she had to write a response um, in, to Bronte and to give this colonized woman and colonized women in general some sort of a voice. And Rhys's work actually serves to present a suggestion for how these colonized women can take back their narratives, and her ending of the novel suggests that they're able to do that through free will and action, whether that action be in literature or in life.